Hey guys, welcome to this special episode over on the Broadcast channel. This is Jackie McDougall, co-host of Broadcast, and I have been podcasting for the past, I don't know, seven years along with my co-host Kim Goldman and uh, to the last, off and on for past seven years, but the past at least two years that we have been doing it um, quite consistently and we've seen a lot of growth and a lot of, uh, I've learned a tremendous amount and have made some pretty incredible contacts in the podcasting world. And so one of the things I like to do is share that. So in the next three episodes, we've got uh, three incredible leaders in the podcast world, John Lee Dumas, Jess, Jessica Kupferman, and Mark Asquith. Um, if you don't know them, you will and you should. Uh, John is the creator of Entrepreneur on Fire, as well as Podcasters Paradise and a bunch of other uh, things that you will hear about soon. And then uh, part two will be with Jess, who is half of the She Podcasts community, uh, with, along with Elsie Escobar. And she also uh, is just a leader. She works with brands and finds creative, uh, effective ways to monetize your podcast. So you're definitely going to want to listen to that. And then we're going to round it out with Mark Asquith, who created, along with John Lee Dumas, podcast websites, uh, which Broadcast is a part of. And so all of them uh, will bring their own unique personal experience and uh, to the topic, but also uh, give you ways to maybe launch your own podcast or maybe give you some things to think about as you have already launched um, and you're looking to grow or monetize or kind of maybe turn it more into a business and, and see what's out there for you. So Anyway, uh, without further ado, here is episode one of So You Want to Be a Podcaster with Mr. John Lee Dumas. Jackie, there's no place I'd rather be than right here, right now with you. I've heard that, actually. So, um, And I love that you're from Maine and I'm from Massachusetts, so we're kind of like kindred spirits out, out there. New England in the house. <laughs> hey, so, you know, we talk to a lot of women on the show, um, mostly women, some men too, but about like the Gen X people, they're all doing the pivot now. And I think the millennials kind of learned that a little bit earlier in their lives. And uh, you learned it like in the womb, kind of. But you, <laughs> but you very quickly, I mean, from just to sum it all up, like you were in the army, you went to law school, you went to corporate job, the whole thing. But then one day you're listening to podcasts, doing your commute like many of us do, and ding, the bell goes off. Boom. That was the aha moment of aha moments. But I didn't even really know it at the time. I was just like, hmm, I love these interviews with successful entrepreneurs. I'm going to get home from work today and go find the daily show. Like I just assumed it must happen. You know, I mean, of course, like the news comes out every day. So there must be a show that interviews successful entrepreneurs every single day. So I went back after work and just was browsing through iTunes looking for that show and it didn't exist. And that's when I was like, oh, wait a second. This is a void that I think needs to be filled. Like I think that this is an opportunity because if I want this, likely someone else does too. And if that someone else is actually multiple people and that multiple people is even like maybe thousands of people, then this could be something big. And, and that's where the idea happened. But and I was clueless. So I was still three months away from launching. So I had a lot of work to do before I actually even validated that aha moment. Wow. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would go, hey, that's something that, you know, is needed. Maybe I'll think about someday possibly maybe doing it, you know, or <laughs> like they start and they have a conversation and they do like five episodes and then they give it up. Like what, what's your secret from going like, I've got this idea, but I'm actually going to make it happen. I was just tired. You know, it would have been six years of struggling through these commutes to jobs I had no passion for and trying these different careers and, you know, maybe being a little excited on day one and by day 10 being like, ugh, what am I doing here? And it's just six years, you know, of law school, of corporate finance, of real estate. And it just was, was tiring. I mean, I was ready to just say, hey, I'm going to A, live life like this, or I'm going to B, 
actually swing the bat. And, and yes, I don't know what the next step is. And, and I love that quote by MLK. Like you don't need to see the whole staircase to take the first step. And, and that was me. Like I had no idea where a daily podcast was going to go. I had no idea how I was going to monetize, if I was going to monetize, if people were going to listen, but there's only one way to find out. And that was by taking the first step, seeing what little bit of fog cleared from that first step and, and seeing if I wanted to take the next step in the second and the third step and the fourth step. And, and Hey, at some point I might've decided, no, like this isn't the staircase I want to be climbing. And I could have, you know, turned around and walked back down, or I can say, well, this isn't quite the staircase I want to be climbing. Let me pivot to the right or the left and start climbing, you know, a new similar, but different staircase. And that was the importance for me of taking that first step that I think a lot of people just need to realize it's all about the action first step. Right. Well, you know, Kim and I both were doing the show. We've been, we were doing it off and on from 2011. And then we finally committed in 2015 and have been doing it weekly and have just been on it. And, and it's been amazing. But I will say, like, finding you and a, a little class you did on uh, Udemy. Is that how you say it? Um, yeah. It you is. know, and you just take your content and you just kind of give it to a lot of different areas for people to find you, which is brilliant. But, you know, we all have that voice. And please tell me you have that voice of like, <laughs> why? Why would anyone want to listen to me? Absolutely. <laughs> that voice I like to call the imposter syndrome, and it's, it lives within us all. I mean, if you don't have that voice inside your head, you're not a human being, so you're not listening to the show because it's just – it's born – uh, we are born with it. It's an innate thing that we all have. It's the reason why humans have survived for, for however many thousands of years that we've been around because we do doubt ourselves and we doubt things that we don't know and we doubt things that we're not comfortable with. Like it's, it's, there's a reason why you know people say don't get stuck in your comfort zone because we, we want to get stuck in our comfort zone because it's just so gosh darn comfortable there. Right. Like It's just like warm, it's cozy, but all the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. So just just realize when that voice is, is whispering or talking or screaming inside your head that you can just look in the mirror and say, oh, OK, so I'm a human being. Good to know. Now let me see how I can deal with this voice. Let me embrace the voice, knowing that it probably means that I'm actually on to something. You know, it's like one of those goal trackers. Like when it starts dinging, like, you know, you might be close to something or that's actually not a goal tracker. That'd be pretty crazy if there was such a thing <laughs> as that. But, you know, one of those metal detectors of like, oh, OK, there's probably something metal here. You, that voice in your head, that means you're probably on the right path. So keep moving towards that. Right, right. Well, I think one of the, the most brilliant things that is that and, and one of the reasons you found success and please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're teaching and helping other people to achieve their goals and, and reach their dreams. I think that's a total shift in the universe lately that people who are are more successful now is it, it's because they're getting out of their own way they're not making it all about themselves but they're trying to help others do you feel like that's part of your success Absolutely. I'm just a big believer in saying, hey, how can I deliver free, valuable, and consistent content? Like that's the ingredients that I found have been the reason why I've been successful with EO Fire and other ventures that I've done. Because if you deliver that free, valuable, and consistent content to an audience, that audience will consume the content. They'll begin to know, like, and trust you. They'll tell their friends. Your audience will grow. Um, and guess what? At that point, you can start engaging that audience and saying, hey, like Fire Nation, which is what I lovingly refer to to, to my audience as mm -hmm. like, what are you struggling with? What are your pain points, your obstacles, your challenges? And then guess what? They come back to me with all of those things. And then I can sift through all of them, see what rises to the top and create the solution for them in the form of a product, a service, a community. You know, that's how I had the idea to launch Podcasters Paradise, which is the number one podcasting community in the world. We have over 3000 members, over $4 million in revenue because my audience gave me that that idea. That's why I created the Freedom Journal, which became the sixth most funded publishing campaign of all time on Kickstarter because my audience was asking me how I and my guests were setting and accomplishing goals. So I created the solution in the form of a beautiful hardcover journal that guides you in setting and accomplishing your number one goal in 100 days. And it did $453,000 in just 33 days in revenue. And again, became the sixth most funded publishing campaign of all time wow. on Kickstarter because I just listened to what my audience was struggling with after I asked them what they were and I created the solution for them and said, hey, you guys asked for it. Here it is. And they 
came in droves for that solution. And, you know, to this day, the Freedom Journal has sold over 14,000 copies of this $39, so not super cheap, but beautiful and incredibly valuable hardcover gold embossed journal that's your guide to accomplish your number one goal. And it all came from those ingredients. Right. And I think that that's, that's the key to those things that all of them have value for, you know, it's not just, again, about you. It's about how you can help other people. And I love that. So, you know, four years later, you're even just with your podcast, you make seven figures a year in revenue. Is that, that's just your podcast? net revenue. So right. that's not just from the actual podcast EO Fire itself. I mean, everything that we generate revenue wise is because of the podcast. Like I that see. is the foundation of everything. But you know, we've built some houses on, I mean, some, some different rooms slash revenue streams on top of that foundation as, as you would build a house. And we actually are a hundred percent transparent of every dollar we make. And if I anybody wants that. to, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It's over at eofire.com slash income. We publish our monthly income reports and we show the good and the bad. I mean, Jackie, we show our wins so that those can be emulated by other podcasters and just other content producers and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And we also show our, our failures and our mistakes and our losses. And, and you know, those add up <laughs> to big numbers as well. So people can avoid those and not make the same mistakes that we do. So we do that. And, you know, as a desire to be a hundred percent transparent, to help people along the way, just like I was helped along my journey. And that's what we're really passionate about. So, you know, the podcast generates a ton of revenue through sponsorships, et cetera. But now we have the podcasting community that we've created. We have, you know, my books, uh, the Freedom Journal and soon to be launched the Mastery Journal this January of 2017. Um, you know, we do joint venture uh, partnerships. We do a lot of different things that bring in revenue in a very diverse stream. So if one of those things goes away tomorrow, we still have other ways that we generate revenue, which is really exciting. Right. Well, that's, that's fantastic. And so, you know, a lot of people who are listening to this are wondering, like, how, how can I get started? What are the, some of the steps? And I know you have so many different um, ways that they can follow you to, to get those skills. I mean, that's one of the things I did. Like, we were already launched. We were already, you know, we had a listenership and, and were engaged, but you know, listening to your tutorials and things like that and videos was extremely helpful for us as far as moving forward and starting to monetize the show and, and things like that. But what would you say? So someone starting out, I mean, you talk about your, you know, the, those pitfalls and the, the mistakes, like, what do you think are some of the things uh, that you if, you, if you had to go back, you wouldn't necessarily do? Oh, were you talking like overall entrepreneurship, like business or just podcasting? Just podcasting. So for just podcasting, you know, I can definitely throw out a killer free resource right at the top here um, that you might have utilized, Jackie, but that's free podcastcourse.com. So if you go to freepodcastcourse.com, it's completely free, 15 days, and it's a complete course. Like it teaches you how to create, grow, and monetize your podcast. Um, and we're really passionate about that. But, you know, to go back to saying, hey, is, is podcasting a medium that I think I might enjoy? You know, and that doesn't mean do you like talking to people because you might want to do an interview-based podcast. You might want to do a topic-based podcast, which is just you maybe doing a rant on a topic. Or maybe you just want to, you know, reach out to an audience, maybe your audience, or if you don't have one yet, an audience, and ask them questions um, or ask them for questions that you're going to then go and find the answers for. And, you know, you do a Q&A uh, show like that. So you can pretty much, you know, decide, hey, do I want to do an interview-based show, a topic-based show, a Q&A-based show? Or or do I want to do a combination of all three or two of the three, et cetera, because those variety shows can be really exciting and cool as well because that variety is a spice of life. But, you know, once you decide on where your strengths lie, now it's about, hey, what am I going to actually have my topic be focused in? Because I'm seeing the successful podcasts that are launching in 2016 are, um, that are successful, that are finding success are because they're niche, because they've really found a unique spin on their show. They've really found an underserved market because that market might be too narrow for other people to really think about. That's why I say niche down till it hurts and then niche even further because you want to start with your podcast so specific that this small group of people are like, oh my God, this podcast is just, it's, it's, it's like it's for me. Like, like fishing in Northwestern Canada, like I'm a fisherman in Northwestern Canada, like this is perfect. And <laughs> right. what is that person going to do? They're going to tell all of their friends, they're going to be a raving fan of yours. And then guess what? You're going to get initial momentum and then you don't have to stay the podcast for Northwestern Canada fishing for the rest of your life. You can say, okay, now it's North America. You know, now it's the Western hemisphere. You know, now it's the world. Like you can broaden out after you get that initial momentum. But if you start too vague, if you try to resonate with everybody at the beginning, you're going to resonate with no one. So just be bold 
bold, stand for something, and really crush that category. Like for me, I was the best podcast that interviews successful entrepreneurs every single day when I launched, but I was also the worst. And I was also the only, like it was just me. I was the only person doing it. So of course I won that game because nobody else was playing that game. So what's the game that you can win? So, so I mean, but coming out of the gate with seven days a week, I mean, that's that's very ambitious. So, how how did you push past that? Oh, I could do it once a month, or like, <laughs> you know, because that's what a lot of people would do, and then they would let it go. But seven days a week, it's like all or nothing, you know. And I looked and- at my strengths. I looked at my strengths and weaknesses, and I said, okay, wow, what are my what are my strengths? Well, I have time. I have the desire to talk to a lot of entrepreneurs so that I can learn and I can get better. Okay, what are my weaknesses? Um, I'm going to be really bad for a long time because I have no experience. I have no skills. I've never done this before. Okay, so how can I you know, like balance out my strengths and my weaknesses and maybe you know, minimize my weaknesses? Well, I can do a podcast every single day because, A, I have the time because this is what I'm committed to doing. And that's going to make me better because I'm doing it every single day, not just four times a month or you know, 50 times a year, but 365 plus. So that was where I just kind of did the weighing for me in the, in the situation that I was at in life. So for you, you know, sit down and, and look at your pros and your cons and your strengths and your weaknesses. In fact, Factor in, hey, what's the best way for you to go forward to make sure that you can crush it? Because again, I was doing a very broad topic. I was doing interviewing successful entrepreneurs, which wasn't the first show out there interviewing entrepreneurs. So I had to niche down in the frequency area. You don't have to niche down in the frequency area. You can niche down in another area because it's another topic or another shift or pivot or mindset um, you know, change, whatever that might be. And there you can win. So you have to find out, again, what are your strengths? How can you amplify those? What are your weaknesses? How can you minimize those? And then execute. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, you really have to look at your own personal and, and uh, personal goals and life because Kim and I are both, you know, we both work full time. I'm in TV. She's in nonprofit. We have kids. We do our thing. And we realize that if we don't do our podcast live and have a set time, you know, and it also it ain't gonna the, happen. Yeah, exactly. You know, because we would come up with excuses. It's kind of like working out at, at the end of it. You're like, wow, that was amazing. But you know, it, it was really hard to do it. So we do it, to, you know, twice a week live, we make it happen. It's just on the calendar. It, it There's nothing, you know, to stop us. And so I think that it's really important to look at your life uh, and, and really try to work within it, you know, and not create something else that's just going to stress you out. Um, I have a 5 p.m. appointment with my virtual trainer today. And why do I do that? I mean, I have the gym. You know, I have all of the equipment. Um, I know how to work out because I've I've been working with my trainer, Jeff McMahon, for a long time. But guess what? I know that when 5 o'clock comes um, and I'm not meeting with Jeff, that I'm probably going to be like, oh, let me just do a couple more emails. And then, oh, let me just, oh, then, oh, oh, Kate just said dinner's ready. And now I can't, I can't work out after dinner and life happens. Absolutely. But I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 p.m. in my gym. Jeff is calling me on Skype and I'm working out for 30 minutes with him. And it's not cheap. But again, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I know that I, I will lose if I don't do that. And I know that I will win if I do that. So that makes the decision easy. Right. So I know there, are, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know there are a lot of podcasts out there. And many of them uh, just kind of sit there stagnant on iTunes and don't do anything. What do you think is the number one thing, you know, we, we have consistency, we have free content, but like, why is it some of them are becoming so popular? And, and how has it changed? You know, it's kind of a two part question. How has it changed when you started four years ago, and people who are trying to start now? Like, you know, what are what are some of the, the leave, leave us with some tips as far as how has it changed what they can do what not to follow? Um, okay, there's a lot of questions. There, I so know. I'm just going to cut you off right there. So <laughs> stop, stop right now. But See what, what I'm, I'm doing? This, first, is why, this is what people do. What I'm going to say first, and um, and then you can start asking me those questions one at a time, yeah. is I'm going to say the number one reason why people fail is because they have unrealistic expectations. You know, they see Entrepreneur on Fire. They see that last month I had 2 million listens. They see that I did six figures of, of net revenue last month, as I have for like the past, you know, 36 months. They see that I, I do seven figures a year in revenue. They see this, they see that. 
but they don't see, you know, the four years of unbelievable hard work. They don't even see the 10 years before that of, of getting my chops and failing and, and seeing what didn't work and being an officer in the army, learning discipline, focus and productivity and all these things. Like they don't see that. So they have these unrealistic expectations. Mm. They launch and their unrealistic expectations, shockingly, <laughs> the definition of unrealistic are not met and they quit and they give up. And so you need to have realistic expectations. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. You know, this is an instant gratification. You know, this isn't just, it's not that it's, it's a business and the business takes time to build a foundation. So that's where people lose. That's where you see a lot of those stagnant podcasts you're talking about. Now, if you want to start ripping through those questions one by one, take it away. <laughs> so, I mean, how do you, you know, you started four years ago, you found success. I worked for a major parenting website back in uh, 2009 uh, for Warner Brothers. And I actually tried to get them to do a daily podcast along with their website, along with their video, along with the, the TV pilot that that they were working on and people kind of poo pooed the idea as if like, you know, nobody's going to listen to a podcast. What's a podcast? So, you know, <laughs> four years ago was a little bit different, but how do you think the whole medium has changed from when you started to where we are now? There's a lot of change, you know, to be completely honest with you, I think that podcast you're talking about would have failed. I mean, 2009 people were not listening to podcasts. I mean, the trends are very clear. And for me, luck had so much to do with it. Like I started podcasting. I did a land grab just at the right time, just when everybody now had an iPhone and, a, and an Android, not just like 10% of the people like, and, and they just wanted that on demand content because Netflix and Amazon, you know, had just really rewired people's minds and saying, I want to listen to what I want to listen to, to what I want to watch when I want to watch it and I want to stop when I want to watch it and I want to stop when I want to stop listening. Like I want that complete control. Like that shift happened in 2012. I just happened to be lucky and have the right idea at the right time and launch and do a land grab because I'll tell you right now, if I launch EO Fire in 2016, um, at the same level that I was at in 2012, which was bad podcast host, no experience, frankly, just not good and not good for a decent amount of time, um, it fails. It's, it fails as a show because it's it's broad, it's vague, and, I tr and, and it tries to resonate with everybody. And in 2016, it would resonate with no one because there's too much noise, there's too much saturation. But in 2012, it was the only thing to, to listen to every single day. And there wasn't much out there in the way of interviewing entrepreneurs. There was a few shows, but not many. So it was a show that was able to do a land grab and get the initial momentum and win. Um, and, and that's what's exciting about this world is, you know, let's just use an example of Instagram stories. I mean, people were complaining about being late to the game in Snapchat. Well, why not? Why weren't you first to the game Instagram stories? Like if you saw that you lost in Snapchat, why didn't you win with Instagram stories? And if you lost in Instagram stories, then why don't you keep your finger on the pulse and win at the next thing that comes, whatever that might be? Like it's always out there. It's always possible. So right. I think that's a really key thing to take in mind. Well, I think that, you know, we've, we've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs. Like I said, we talked to a lot of women who are looking to do the pivot. So, you know, say we, we have, we actually call her Kate, our little avatar, our, mm -hmm. our perfect listener. And, mm -hmm. you know, she, she is, is doing the, the nine to five or she's doing that. She, her career is going well, but she's moving on to something else. She's, she wants to create a little bit more balance and a little more, um, you know, streaming income and, and, and get a little more excitement in her life. But, you know, she starts a podcast and then crickets like she doesn't. The, how do you get people to, um, you know, to respond to what they need when you're asking them, what do you need or, or comment on this or let us know what you think? And they and she could see the downloads. She sees that the show's growing, but she's not getting the feedback. What kind of what kind of advice would you give her? A lot of people just launch their show and then they just kind of sit back and say, okay, like it's on the directories, like people will find me and, and they don't uh, and to the numbers that you want or you hope. Um, directories are amazing, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, you name it, but you can't rely on them alone. You have to go to where your avatar is. Like where is Kate hanging out every single day? Like Kate's probably in 
an amazing, free, thriving Facebook group. Like, why are you not in that Facebook group every day going for five minutes to that Facebook group, asking a question, answering a question, giving a piece of support, giving a piece of guidance, and then piecing out and doing that for 30 days. And then on day 31, Kate posts something and you say, okay, that's actually a great question. Um, you, you know, this is me, you know, fill in the blank. This is Jackie. You know, we, we've conversed before. Like, I've enjoyed our past conversations, uh, you know, in this group. And we actually talked about that that exact question that you just had in our episode, you know, 12, here's a link to it. And not just Kate now, but everybody in that group or all your avatars are going to flock to that link because you've become a person of value in that group for a month, two months, three months, however long you decided to take to establish yourself. And now you're going to where your listeners are to bring them back to you, to subscribe to your show and to give yourself a chance to get meaningful listeners. Right. And I think you just nailed it because a lot of people think, oh, I have to promote my show and they go into these groups and it's link, 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 link. You know, it's like the multi-level marketing people. You know, it's just they don't create the relationships and build the trust before they start promoting themselves. Um, never works. No, it never works ever. So um, anyway, I really appreciate your time. I think that, you know, what you're doing is so valuable. I'm grateful that I stumbled upon uh, your content a long time Yay. ago. And really, um, it's it's been a life changer for me. And uh, Kim, who, you know, isn't here today, but she uh, makes fun of me all the time because I'm constantly learning <laughs> things and then texting her and being like, I learned something, you know, so it's, it shifted my life into a place of growth and learning. And I've become more of a student of life um, by growing the podcast. And so it's been really amazing in all aspects. So I, I want to thank you for that. Well, I receive your thanks. I think it's important to recognize when people say kind things, not just to brush it off. So that's kind of something that I've learned over the years that I definitely try to practice. And Jackie, thanks for having me on. It's much appreciated. And, you know, we've mentioned freepodcastcourse.com, but we have a ton of of completely free resources for entrepreneurs at eofire.com. And of course, our biggest passion project is the Freedom Journal, which is all about accomplishing your number one goal in 100 days. And it's just that step-by-step -step guide in a gorgeous hardcover journal. So if people want to learn more, it's at thefreedomjournal.com. Awesome. And I'm going to be uh, linking to all of this on our website Yay. as well to make sure they get out because everything that you put out is like gold. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. so thank you so much, John. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, John Lee Dumas. Now, if that guy doesn't inspire you and get you fired up, you must have you must be dead inside because he gets me like, all right, what's next? What am I doing? What you know? What's our next product? What's something we can do that's different? Um, so I hope that he was as inspiring for you as he has been for me. So if you want to find his course uh, on Udemy or any other, just look at the show notes here or at broadcast.com, and uh, we have links to those classes, anything you really want to try. We also have links to John's products, whether it's Podcasters Paradise and you want to be a part of that, which um, I have recently joined, um, or you want to order the Freedom Journal or any of the other products that John is offering, head over to broadcast.com slash John Lee Dumas, and you can find all of those um, and get yourself started because I think now is the time. As he said, as John says, you know, when's the best time to start? It's now. If you haven't started already, now is the time. So really appreciate having him on. Tune in to the next episode when we talk to Jessica Kupferman from She Podcasts. Um, and she's got some really interesting, creative ways to think about podcasting and also to monetize uh, your show. So you definitely want to tune in for that one. And then part three will be Mark Asquith of podcast websites. Thanks so much for listening. I'll catch you next time.